about penicillin delabeling, and um, it's a term that I've uh, come up across, uh, come across very often uh, most recently, and um, it, it's a quite a confusing term. Um, so, what exactly is it? What does it mean? Okay, so th so the term delabeling is very confusing, and it's confusing not just for people with a label of penicillin allergy, but also healthcare professionals, GPs. It's a term that's really arisen in the past few years in an attempt to reduce the number of people who have been incorrectly labelled as being allergic to penicillin. And one so thing somebody that might have, when they were younger, been had an allergy, they've still got that label on their on their records to say potentially allergic to or they are allergic to penicillin. Absolutely. And the majority of people who have this label of penicillin allergy acquired it in childhood. And the reason that the majority of people have this is because they had a minor rash when they had an infection. They were treated with penicillin and it was reported to their GPs and they were then labelled. And once you have a label in your medical records of penicillin allergy, then there's two things that happen. The first is that the details of the original reaction get lost because they were never recorded. It was simply recorded that you're allergic to penicillin. The second thing that happens is you can never get rid of that label. And is there a danger to this? Is there a danger of having a label of penicillin allergy? And the answer is definitely yes. And the reason is because penicillins are amongst the safest of antibiotics. They're also not just a single antibiotic, but there are a whole range of penicillin related antibiotics that you can then no longer have. And penicillins are the safest antibiotics in pregnancy, for example. So these are the antibiotics you really do want to be able to have. Um, and it means that you're then you then have to have alternative antibiotics, which will be less safe. Is there a danger to having alternative antibiotics? Well, the, well, the the, the evidence is that if you go into hospital with a label of penicillin allergy, you do get alternative antibiotics, but your hospital stay is prolonged. And the reason for the prolongation of your hospital stay may be manifold, but one of the factors is that you're much more likely to get a hospital acquired infection. For example, MR MRSA is more common in people with a label of pencil and algae. So no long so so not only do you get a more prolonged stay, but you're more likely to get infections that are unrelated to the infection that you went in to hospital for. And each year nearly a million people go into hospital with a label of penicillin and algae. So this is this is a big thing. This is a very big thing. So what is then that a patient that might be going into hospital can do? They usually ask, do you have an allergy? Uh, to penicillin and if they have they say well yes do they say yes but that might have been 20 years ago and then get tested or then what do they do okay well okay all your listeners will know that um, there's very few allergy clinics out there and if three million people suddenly went to them as a result of this video and <laughs> asked the gps <laughs> to refer them for delabeling then we'd all I be, wouldn't be very popular for a start <laughs> We'd all be in trouble. Um, we'd be in trouble. And I think that, um, you know, um, allergy services would be in trouble. We'd be doing nothing else. Um, and all the other people with all the other allergies and all the other causes of anaphylaxis would then be unable to access allergy services. So so, so the first thing to say is that um, it's actually very difficult to get investigated for penicillin allergy. Once you've got that label, it's difficult to get investigated because there are very strict criteria laid down by NICE as to who can be investigated. And they tend to be people who have immune deficiency and have to have a penicillin in future. That's the sort of level of, of, um, of, of you know, that's the sort of criteria and very few people will achieve those criteria. So if you have a label of penicillin allergy, the most important thing that you can do is to find out about the, the the original reaction. Find out from your mother, find out from your parents, find out from anyone who knew about it in the first place. You know, was it a rash? Was it anaphylaxis? 
was it with the first dose? If it was with the first dose, then it's much more likely to be anaphylaxis and a true allergy. If it was, you know, several days into the dose, you got a bit of a headache or you got a bit of nausea or a bit of diarrhea, that's unlikely to be allergy. If it was a minor rash that got better by itself, you didn't need to be admitted to hospital, less likely to be a, a true penicillin allergy. Get those details. Once you have those details and you're armed with those details, then the next time, and, and get them written down, get them included in your hospital and your GP records. Say, look, I don't want this, this, this penicillin allergy label to just be, I'm allergic to penicillin. I want the details of what happened to me when that label was put on in the first place. So get that included in your GP record. So the next time you're referred to hospital, that information is included. And if, for example, you needed to have penicillin and it was the best drug, the best antibiotic, the safest antibiotic, then the clinician who sees you, he doesn't have to be an allergist. If he sees that this was a minor reaction, then he'll discuss with you and say, look, I don't think you're allergic to penicillin and I'm going to give you some penicillin because that's the right drug for you. And he'll discuss that with you. And that's what delabeling is. That's the that's the where the term comes from. It will be delabeling at the point of care by a non allergist in a hospital. Right now, it's only going to be in hospital. I think in the future, we're going to try to expand it to primary care, to GPs. Once um, once clinicians have much more confidence in being able to delabel people um, without any investigation, they'll simply give you maybe a fraction of a dose, or they may just say, look, that was such a minor reaction. It was a headache after getting penicillin. Or some people, funny enough, actually, some people have, have been told that they're allergic because mum was allergic. They've never had penicillin. Mum was allergic or dad was allergic and so they went to their GP practice and said, look, I mean, there's a strong family history. I think you should label my son as being or my daughter as being allergic to penicillin. So there's never been a reaction. And those sort of people do not need investigation because because it doesn't run in families. So get it, get it written down. Get it in your records. <clears throat> First point is the GP. Update, update the GP records. Uh, and if you're going into hospital, get that written down as well. But again, it'll go into the hospital records when you're going in for a particular procedure. And take it with you, take it written down with you. The other thing I would say is that if you've ever had a severe reaction, if you've had anaphylaxis with penicillin, then that also has to be written down. We have to differentiate the 5% who are true, truly allergic from the 95% who aren't truly allergic. So if you have a true allergy, it's even more important to write it down and to ensure that you um, emphasize to, to whoever the doctor is that you've had anaphylaxis with the first dose or you've had a very severe, what we call a cutaneous allergic reaction. If you've had one of these reactions, you know, called Stevens Johnson syndrome, something where you became very unwell, you had a widespread rash, your skin peeled off, you needed intensive care, that also needs to be written down it needs to be documented carefully and you need to carry it with you at all times. Medic alert bracelet, you know, I mean, all of that information needs to be included to ensure that nobody gives you penicillin in the future. They, and, and the other thing I would say is that you need to try to find out which was the original penicillin. Because interestingly, you can be allergic to one penicillin and not allergic to another one. So if you can find out which was the original penicillin that gave you the reaction, that's even more important. So which was the original penicillin? Was it the first dose or was it many doses? Was it a minor reaction or was it a severe reaction? That's the sort of information that people can try to acquire, try to find out about. And you may need to investigate multiple sources for this. You know, ask, ask your mother, ask your father, ask whoever was around at the time try to find it from the original GP records. So that's the information and that's what you can do practically that would help enormously.